Prophet says abide by her will not enter paradise Prophet says abide by her will not enter paradise Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel There are many blessings of reciting through the park upon the best of creation أكس الله عليه وآله وسلم Indeed Shaykh Mujaddiddin Firozabadi alayhi rahmatullahi al-hadi states that when you sit in a gathering, a majlis, recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. The beauty of this will be that Allah Azza wa Jal will appoint an angel that will keep you from backbiting. And when you depart from the gathering, then again recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Muhammad. The angel will then keep others from backbiting against you. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel. Backbiting is a disease and a cancer in our society. And it is one that is gradually tearing the very fabric of our society apart. No home, no relationship is surviving. Because we don't recognize and we don't treat this serious disease. It is reported on the authority of Sayyidina Amar bin Wasilah radiyallahu ta'ala an, that during the time, the beautiful time of Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person passed by a community and they greeted him with salam. So he replied, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And after he had departed, one of the people from this community said, I hate him for Allah azza wa jal the exalted. When he who had left heard that behind his back somebody had said this about him, clearly he became upset. And where did he go? But the glorious court of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he requested in the court of Akka Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Ya Rasulallah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can you call this person and ask him why he hates me? The beloved Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent for the man. He came to the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he was asked about the statement. And he reaffirmed it. Ki ya Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I did say that. Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked, Why do you hate him? And he replied, I am his neighbor. Ya Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want the best for him. By Allah, I have not seen him offer any nafal salah beside the farz that he offers, and the farz is offered by all the righteous people and the wicked ones. Yet, he does not do anything extra. The person who had brought the complaint to the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa humbly requested, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ask him, in the fulfillment of my fara'id, do you find any fault? Is there anything wrong with my namaz? My salah, is there anything wrong with my wuzu, my sajda, my ruku? When Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, this person replied, okay, I had not seen a deficiency in his faraiz. By Allah, I have not however seen him observe nafal fasts. He does keep the fasts of Ramadan, but Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa everybody keeps those. I've never seen him keeping any nafal fasts. Akka sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam then asked, 
Have you seen him miss any of his fasts in Ramadan? Upon which he replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu I haven't. But then as well as that, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have never seen him spending in the path of Allah apart from that which is obligatory, his zakat. And all the people, whether they're good or bad, they pay their zakat. Yet this person just does what he has to and nothing more. Again, the person who was upset asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask him, has he ever seen any deficiency in my zakat that I give in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal? And again, the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, this person said, no, I have not seen any deficiency. He does pay his zakat on time in full in a beautiful manner. Upon this, Aka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to the person who had expressed his hate of the other, stand up. He, as in the one he had said he hated, might be better than you. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, this is a narration from the court of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it tells us about the tactics of the shaitan and how the shaitan manipulates situations. Because look, you had here a beautiful companion of Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And admittedly, his fara'is, his namaz was perfect. And the person who had said, expressed the hatred in relation to him, testified that his namaz, his ruku, his sujood, his wuzu was perfect. The person testified that his fasts of Ramadan and his conduct was perfect. The person who had, who had developed this hatred testified that his zakat, a fundamental pillar of Islam, was perfect paid on time, paid in a beautiful manner. And yet, he had developed hatred in his heart for that person, and that hatred had come out in the form of backbiting after he had left to express that hatred purely because this person didn't carry out extra acts. And then the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, orders him to stand up and say, why do you do that when he might be better than you? Look at the admonition of Rasulullah saying, why do you belittle him? My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, this disease of backbiting comes in many shapes and sizes, many forms. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's clear, but it is a trick of the shaitan. Why? Because this disease helps to destroy Islamic Brotherhood. And these statements that we make when we question others and their piousness, their fara'id, their wajibat, without any valid reason, and we express this to others, they all fall into backbiting. What has given you the permission to go around and start to belittle other people's worship. What has given you the authority to express your opinion in relation to his inner state? Oh, he was praying salah, but he was showing off. But surely you could not have gauged the condition of his heart. Surely you didn't know he may have been the most humble person at that particular time in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. He may have been crying in the love of Allah and his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He may have been crying because of the fear of the punishment. And yet you have judged him and then not only judged him badly, but then expressed that to others, belittling his acts. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel. By doing this, we cause great distress to our Muslim brothers. And statements like, oh, he never praised the Hajjat. 
his life has gone by and he never kept one nafil fast. He doesn't offer salat al ishraq or chasht. He doesn't, I've never seen him reading extra nafil. In fact, you know when he's done his salah, you know the last two nafils, he misses those as well. I've, I've noticed, I've been counting. Gosh, we, we spent more time studying our salah and improving it than we spent studying other people's. And then not only are we spying on other people, which is a sin in itself, but then we have to express what we perceive, what we think we've seen, we have to go and tell everybody. And by doing that, not only do we belittle his worship, and we cause disrespect of him in the eyes of others, and we think that my respect is increasing. Not only do we do that, but we also burn all our good deeds and gain a bag of sins. Because ghibat is a major, major sin. So in a situation where we could have kept quiet, could have kept our mind clean and preserved the good deeds that we had, what have we done? Simply by thinking bad of another person, developing a thought process that belittled him and then expressing those bad thoughts to others behind his back. We have committed this major sin and destroyed our peace and tranquility. But not only that, the good deeds in our book of deeds. And then you have, he never comes to Jama'at. Oh, he doesn't know what the mosque is like. Ask him where the mosque is. Does Sharia give us the permission to say that? And if, you know, one of the Vasrasas, um, one of the whispers of the shaitan, one of the traps of the shaitan, one of the plans of the shaitan is that he pretends to make you inside, he pretends that you are feeling sorry for him or you are expressing something that is found in him and you're trying to help him in some way. But that's not true. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, don't deceive yourselves. Because if you were truly worried about him, if you were truly worried, for example, about his salah, and he's praying and he's praying incorrectly, was it the right thing to approach him in a beautiful manner when he's alone? Not when he's in front of people. Don't disrespect him in front of 10 people and say, oh, you can't even read your salah properly. No, wasn't the proper way to approach him and say, the Islamic brothers, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, in the beautiful Madni Kaflas of Dawat Islami, we learn how to pray properly. And Alhamdulillah, if you, if you position your feet in this way, and if you keep your uh, sight in this place, then the reward will increase so many fold. And tell them in a beautiful way. We've all heard about the famous uh, Vakia of uh, the great uh, Hazrat Imam Hassan, Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu where there is a companion of Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is performing wudu and they perhaps aren't performing it in the perfect way that the companions did. And so the, the amazing Imams see this and what do they say? They say, Hazrat, can you please check our wudu while we do it to make sure that we're not making any mistakes? Look at the hikmat, look at the, the, the feelings they had. Look at the understanding they had of not to hurt somebody's feelings. Look at the Islamic brotherhood they had. Hazrat, can you check our wuzu so to make sure we are not making a mistake? And when they start to perform wuzu, this great companion realizes that their wuzu is perfect, but there may be something to improve in his. And my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, that is the beauty of Islam. And today, because of this act of backbiting, we are losing this beauty in our religion. People are attracted towards it. People are attracted to those who are sincere, who do not backbite. Today, a lot of people complain that I don't have many friends. And one of the reasons is that we are constantly engaged in backbiting others. Let me tell you, on page 313 of Uyun al-Hikayat, Volume 2, published by Maktabat al Madina, the publishing department of Dawat Islami, a saying of Sayyidina Haris Muhasbi Rahmatullah. He says, Refrain from backbiting. It is such an evil that a person seeks it quite easily and willingly 
It's attractive. You want to do it because the nafs of the shaitan want you to kind of gain that satisfaction. And what do you think of an action that entices you to be disloyal to the one who has favored you and causes your deeds which are hard earned to be given to those you are talking about? And it displeases your creator. If we had a pot of money and every time we committed the ghibat, every time we were backbiting somebody, we had to take out a £10 note and we had to hand it over to them, we'd stop straight away. Because we've lost a tenner just by saying one thing. And in a day, we'd lose thousands. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, we are losing hundreds of good deeds from our book of deeds that we've earned through hard work, through hard toil, through getting up at Fajr at four o'clock, to going to the Masajid, fasting in the months of Ramadan, reading the Quran in the early morning, doing the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, spending time trying to please him and his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and then having built something to present in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. On the day of judgment, we then waste it all just because of the vaswasas and the whispers of the shaitan and to give our nafs, our inner self, that little satisfaction of saying something bad about others. How foolish is that? The shaitan entraps us into this. Why? Because he doesn't want us winning. When you got up and you prayed, he was screaming. When you got up and you read the Quran, he was upset. When you served your parents, he wasn't happy. And when you waste all of that because you're sat in the company of friends and you're backbiting somebody else, that's when he's happy. When you waste all of that because you're talking to your brother and you're talking about a third person and you're backbiting, he's buzzing. He's now saying, right, I've got him exactly where I want him now. Because I wanted him to waste all that hard work. And he's going down that path now. Even if he's angry, let's make him angry. Why? Because if he's upset at somebody, he will say bad things. And he will do ghibat. He will backbite them till he is, his heart is content. And by the end of it, he may have wasted all his deeds. Oh, let's make him jealous. Because if he's jealous of somebody, then again, he will fall into this trap of backbiting. He will commit sins that he would never normally commit. So we know from our experiences that sometimes what happens is normally we won't backbite. We'll try and protect ourselves. But then somebody triggers something. And this trigger suddenly means that off we go and it can't be helped. Sometimes the trigger is as simple as this. That somebody says, oh, somebody said something about you. We don't know whether it's true. We haven't investigated it. We don't know whether the person said it or anything. But the next thought that comes into our mind and straight transferred to our lips is, oh, he's such and such, he's this, he's that. I, I could, I've got a list of things that I can give you about him. And suddenly we've blurted everything out. And then often we find out that it wasn't true anyway. But yet we have committed the sin of backbiting and such a major sin and such a grave and heinous crime that we have burnt our own deeds or given them to him. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, Islam was beautiful. It was here to protect us and others from this disease, from this cancer. It was here to help clear our mind of others' deficiencies. It was here so the evil thoughts could be blocked off and you would not say anything bad about anybody. You would respect the dignity of the other person. Islam taught us the beautiful manners 
Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sunnah mubarakah was that when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wished to point something out, Aka sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam never said that this person here has done this. No, the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would talk generally and say, one should not do this. Why? Because Aka sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam knew that if I point somebody out, then they may feel in their heart that I have been belittled. And the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the beautiful way, even in religious matters, to show other people the right way without upsetting them. And if the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so conscious of other people's feelings, then shouldn't we be following this beautiful sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, this disease is one that needs to be taken seriously. Islam prohibits this and it prohibits it for a reason. We know the state of our households. Just imagine today that if every member of our family recognized what riba, the backbiting was, what the dangers were, and how it could tear our house apart, and probably has done in a lot of cases, and how without preventing it, and by guarding ourselves against it, we can live a life of peace and tranquility, how different our life would be, and how close we would be to our Allah and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Because the greatest danger is that those who indulge in backbiting, are actually opening up grave dangers for themselves. And one of the biggest dangers the scholars write is this, that the one who is indulged in backbiting, there is a danger that he may not die in the state of Iman. Allahu Akbar. And Iman is our greatest treasure. And yet backbiting, talking about people behind their backs, it could lead to you dying without Iman. And that is the ultimate loss. What will you do if one died in that state? How would you answer the questions of the grave when Munkar and Nakir come to the grave and they ask you the questions and you cannot answer because you haven't died in the state of Iman? What will then happen? Then will start the torment of the grave. The guiding light of spirituality the great Islamic scholar says on page 110 of Bahari Shriyat, volume 1, page 1250, published by Maktab al Madina, the publishing department of Dawat Islami. What he says is this at that moment, when somebody dies other than in the state of Iman, an announcement is made in the skies that will say, He is a liar. Place a bed of fire for him. Clothe him in clothes made of fire. Open the doors of hell towards him. The heat of the flames of hell will reach his grave. And then two blind and deaf tormentors will arrive in his grave to punish him. They will have iron rods. And the iron rods are so powerful that if they were to strike a mountain with them, the mountain would turn to dust. These angels will continuously strike him with these rods. Snakes and scorpions will torment him in his grave. And his actions will metamorphosize into dogs and bears and other animals that will punish him. Allahu Akbar. And all because we wanted to satisfy our nafs and do ghibat of others. Just that bit of pleasure, or that having a laugh, or taking the mickey out of somebody, that mehful. Because let's face it, that's what we do it for. And then on the day of judgment, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, dragged by their forelocks, thrown into the fire of hell, where they will reside in forever, and Mufti Sab writes, they will be placed, those who do not die in the state of Iman, they will be placed in a chest of fire. 
and that will be ignited and placed in another chest of fire and that will be ignited and placed in another chest of fire and that will be ignited. And likewise, they will be in fire upon fire. And at this point, even those in the fire of hell will be annoyed at these people and how severe their punishment is. Allahu Akbar. And yet those who guarded themselves from this satanic whisper, those who were very quick to learn about the dangers of backbiting, those who wanted to control their tongue, those who wanted to guard the dignity of their Muslim brother, those who wanted an Islamic society to flourish, those who didn't listen to the shaitanic whispers and in their jealousy or fit of rage and anger, belittle and disrespect others and talk about them behind their backs, where will they be? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, through the blessings and the fazl of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will be destined for Jannah, paradise. And they will remain therein forever. And death will be brought and it will be slaughtered. And those in the fire of hell will cry out because there's no more death and they are forever in the punishment of the fire. And those in Jannah, those who were pious, those who protected themselves will be in the gardens of paradise and will be happy that there's no more death. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, Allahu Akbar. Mufti Sab writes a translation that we ask Allah for forgiveness and we seek the well-being of our religion, our worldly matters and of our hereafter. Morning and evening, make this dua whenever you pray. Ya Allah, protect us from ghibat. Protect us from this grave and heinous crime. Protect us from this disobedience in your court. We know that it is something that you hate so much that one who engages in it is in danger of losing his iman. Ya Allah, protect us from this crime. Ya Allah, protect us and help us to stay away from it. Let us even if we find a fault in others, let us be quiet about it. Let us try and hide it rather than and manifest it, rather than express it in front of others. Today, the society is such that in the times gone past, you know, when somebody found out about a problem that people had, they used to try and hide it. So somebody had a fault, Islamic brothers, Islamic sisters would try and find, hide it. Why? Because the rationale of the Hadith Mubarakah that if you hide the faults of others, Allah Azza wa Jal will hide your faults. They were trying to hide them. And today, where have we got to? We've gone so far, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, that if we, the olden days, if they accidentally found out about somebody's faults, they used to hide them. And today, unfortunately, we are actively going out, spying on people and looking for other people's faults so we can broadcast them on social media or in our circle of friends and we can have all have a great laugh. That great laugh now may be the greatest mistake you make of this life. Today, that backbiting, that mephil, that gathering where you are the talk, you are making everybody laugh, may come back to be remembered by you as the worst time of your life. It was the time when you threw away your good deeds. It was the time where you bought for yourself the punishment of the grave. Just by indulging in backbiting, just by committing this evil, just by highlighting others' mistakes, and in all this time, the one person whose mistakes you should have been looking out for, the one person who you should have been rectifying, the one person whose book of deeds was most important was yours. You ruined your book of deeds. 
You ruined your life. You ruined your relationship. You ruined your obedience in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. You ruined your devotion to Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. And you fell into this trap of backbiting. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, we need to treat this disease, this cancer, as serious as it is. If today you found out that there was a risk of developing cancer because you ate a certain product or a certain thing, you would avoid eating that. You would avoid going anywhere near anything that was cancer causing. You would stay miles away. If I said to you there's a substance in the room you sat, which is giving out radioactive waves, which could cause cancer, you'd run a mile. Well, next time you're tempted to do hebat, or you sat within a mafil where you know people are going to do, run that mile. That running away, that moving away, if you can't stop it, will be the greatest thing that you do. And you will remember in this world because you will preserve your deeds and you will preserve your peace and tranquility. And you will remember it in the grave as well when you are able to answer the questions of the angels. And you will remember it on the day of judgment when you will rise and have something to present in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us all the ability to protect ourselves from this crime of backbiting. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Lameen. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet says a backbiter will not enter paradise. Prophet says a backbiter will not enter paradise.